Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. And uh, we're going to start with a song that uh, I used to sing many years ago since Jesus came into my heart. Remember, after we, uh, after I first gave my life to Christ, this song, I used to really enjoy this. What a wonderful change in my life has been brought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. you glad we've got a God big enough to yeah. handle it all. Amen. Well, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the power of prayer. Amen. And Lord, we're asking this morning that you would reach down your hand upon these who are sick today. 
Lord, we pray for Bob that you would touch him. Lord, his eyes are getting in trouble again and in his, in his lungs. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would just work a miracle for him. And Lord, as he goes up to help his brother and get moved up, pray that you would just give him the strength that he needs to keep him safe as he's driving. Father, we pray for, uh, for, for Jean, that you would touch her. Lord, we just pray that you would just work a miracle of healing. And also, Lord, for, uh, for Gordy, that you would just touch his body. Drive that illness out of his body. Thank you, Lord. You heal. And he needs that right now. Father, we just pray for, uh, for President Trump. That, Lord, they're out to kill him. We know there's people that are making attempts on his life. And, and Lord, that help him find uh, who's doing some of these things going on. Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name you would just keep your protective hand upon him. And Father, we pray that you would also uh, be with Israel today. Lord, you know the rockets that are flying again. And God, we pray that you would protect your people. And Lord, there's so many right now sitting in bomb shelters. God, we pray that you would just bring victory and Lord, that the name of Jesus would be glorified. And through it all, we pray for revival in Israel. That people will see it's Jesus that they need. And Jesus is the Messiah. Father, we pray that you would just, uh, um, just work a miracle, Lord, as far as our election right here in America. God, we know there are those that would try to destroy it and destroy our nation. But God, you're still God. Hear the prayers of your people. And Lord, bring revival to this land. Bless our service now, we pray this morning. And we just give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 says, What know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a lot of things going on that have got people shook up. And uh, but praise God, we our Lord is big enough to handle it all. Therefore, Jesus, who is our Savior, because of him, we will not be moved. We will stand firm in our faith on the word of God. Amen. Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. I am in his favor, I shall not be moved. I am in the tree, planted by the wall.
Oh, I praise the Lord. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I don't know if you've ever had to go into a courtroom. And uh, it's a scary place. And uh, I've been in a courtroom, but not because I did something wrong, but I was a professional witness. Doesn't that make me sound important? And uh, I had to stand up as a pastor and testify. But you know, there were some nervous people in that courtroom. But you know, when, when we stand in the courtroom of our God, we don't have to be worried. When Jesus is our Savior, he is the one who washed away all our sins. We can come with joy into the presence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, because He's our God. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me proud.
You see us for who we are. And so you're willing to love us. Thank you, Jesus, so we can be in your presence today. Thank you, Lord, you're here to listen to our voices and hear our cries. And when we are afraid, you put your arms around us, Lord, and you give us peace. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here to listen to our worship. And you rejoice in our feeble attempts to praise you. And we just want to glorify you this morning. We want to praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The announcements coming up for this week. We have uh, on Tuesday morning, again, our, our telecast at 10 o'clock, and then Wednesday night, Bible study at Sharon's again. That's Wednesday night at 6 30. And then uh, uh, next Sunday is going to be a, a busy time. Uh, we've got, uh, again, starts out with Sunday School 9.30 on Worship at 11, and then next Sunday night we have our concert here with the, uh, with Ben Denis. And so uh, there are posters in the back, so you can pick them up and get them out and let people know about it. And uh, they always bless our hearts when they come. So next Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Anything else that we need to mention this morning? If not, we're going to call on uh, Suzanne and Diana to come up and do a song for us this morning.
Amen. Praise the Lord. That is very true, isn't it? Amen. Great message. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would speak to us this morning. And Lord, it is true that all we really need and all we want is you. And thank you, Lord, that you are here to listen to our cry, our voices. And we pray you speak to us today through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I spoke from uh, 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. I just got into the first few verses, and I'd like to take you further, uh, going to start in verse 7 uh, this morning. And again, this is a scripture, uh, David is crying out to the Lord. And uh, things have not been going good. You ever have those days? Things just are not going good. You know, you feel that like God has called you. You feel like this is the will of the Lord and everything kind of goes backwards. I'll tell you, there have been times when uh, we went on a tour and then we felt that God went on a different tour than we did. And it seemed like from the, from the very beginning, we struggled. And nothing went right. And sometimes it wasn't until the last service of the whole crusade, the whole tour, that we saw with our eyes what God was doing. And then we thanked the Lord. But there were so many times when we never did really see with our eyes, at least then. But God says his word will not return void. And so we, we bring that word, sometimes we sing and, and we don't necessarily, don't always get the, re the responses we get, we want. Remember one time we, uh, we did a service and it was to a bunch of ladies. And as we were singing and ministering to them, we were sure that they had eaten something that didn't agree with them. They all looked like they were in pain. And uh, we got done with that. We went home and we thought, boy, and here we thought that was God's will. And we felt so defeated, and we never, you know, nobody ever talked to us about it. Nobody said we did a good job. Nobody said anything. We went on. And it was many years later, a lady came up to me, and she said, you remember that service you did in our church for us ladies? You know, and... Yes, it's hard to smile. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, you know, that, that day, as you were sharing ministry, I realized for the first time I needed Jesus Christ as my Savior. And she said there while that service was going on, she said, I bowed my head and I prayed and asked Jesus to come into my heart. And my life has been totally changed ever since that day. And so, you know, sometimes you get up and you, you minister, you sing, you do whatever you know for the Lord. And uh, sometimes you feel everybody is just really with you, and boy, you feel so good afterwards. But then there are other times you don't. We've been through that many, many times. So be encouraged. God is the one who calls. 
David had gone through some terrible times here. God had put a call on him to be the king. Now, wouldn't you think if God pulls you apart away and says, now you're going to be the next king, wouldn't you think something great is going to happen? And something great did happen, like he killed that, that giant. You know, he stoned the... You know, he stoned old Goliath and he just fell fast asleep. Like one guy said, David rocked the giant until he was asleep. Well, he did. And, uh, and so he saw some good things. He saw with his eyes what God had done. And those were great times. But think of the times he's, he, he was obedient to the call of God and didn't see anything happen. Faith is pressing on even when you cannot see what God is doing. Because, you know, when we get up or, you know, we get up to sing, when you get up to sing, you know, God does not promise you that everybody's going to pat you on the back. And that's not what's important. Because that brings you bondage. It's, it's ministering out of obedience to the call of God for Him. The pat on the back is just a bonus. And we found that out I mean, it, it's a hard thing, to, hard thing to grasp. And I wish I could say that in those years on the road, we just had applause wherever we went. But you know, a lot of people were in pain to see him. We were glad to see his leave. But later, like that time, we saw God was your king. He was working. Amen. David, when he writes this, it's before he actually becomes king. And uh, and he went through some awful times, you know. But anyway, he says in verse 7, In my distress, I call upon the Lord. Oh, that's a good time to do it. But he says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he didn't hear my voice out of his temple. And my cry did enter into his ears. There's a lot of things that we don't understand. We go through a lot of hard times. God does not say if we walk with Him, we'll never go through hard times. He doesn't say that. The devil says if you're really serving the Lord, you wouldn't go through this. But that's not what God says. Think of us strange when fiery trials come upon you as though some strange things happen. Your faith is going to be tested. Why are you serving the Lord? Are you serving so you can get blessed? Or are you serving because of what Jesus did? Amen. If you're serving to get blessed, that's when the bondage comes. That's when the fear comes. But if you're serving God no matter what you're doing, because of what Jesus did for you, that's when the blessings come. And God wants us to walk by faith, not by sight. David says, in my distress, I call. And it says that the voice, God heard my voice out of his temple. And I was looking at that again. And I was thinking back about the book of Revelation. When we talk about a temple. Why do we go into a temple? We call it a church. 
But why do we go into the church? He said, especially say if uh, if you things are not going right, things are not going good at all. And you say, I need to go to church this morning. And how many times do people just go into a church to pray? So why do you do it in church instead of just doing it in your home? We do it in our church because we feel that God is there. That's his house. The temple is a dwelling place of God. The Bible says, you are born again, your body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. As the temple of the Holy Spirit, you are the dwelling place of God. God dwells inside of you. Now, if you know that God is dwelling in you, you don't have to be afraid because he's not going to get beat up. God is in you. That is the hope we have. He is in you. And therefore, it is through you and in you, He is operating. That's why we can do things that we cannot do. Because it's God doing it and not us. Yes, He uses our bodies. He uses our mouth. He uses our hands. If it were not for that, I would not dare pray for the sick. Because what happens when somebody walks up to you and says, Will you pray for me? I need a miracle. <laughs> Who me? We <laughs> One time we were out in Montana and, uh, and a, a kid came up with that smirk on his face. Don't you just love that? And he's about 12 years old, I suppose, something like that. He came up with a smirk on his face. He said, I've got a short leg and I want you to pray for me. And then he got that smirk, like, I'm going to prove to you it doesn't happen. Well, again, he did. He had courage of the spine. Well, I there was a young fellow there, he's about 18 years old. And I turned to him and I said to him, Leroy, I said, you pray for him. His eyes got big and he said, me? I said, yep. But, 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 uh, really good like English. He said, I don't know how. I said, you know how to pray, don't you? Yeah. You heard me as I prayed for this girl, didn't you? Yeah. And I said, isn't it true that Jesus lives in your heart? Yeah. Then get on your knees and pray. Okay. He got on his knees. He prayed for that boy, and that boy lost that smirk on his face. When his spine straightened right out. And he was healed. That 18 year old boy, the next time we saw him, he was pastoring the church. It wasn't he that healed that kid, just like it wasn't me that healed that girl. It was God. And God gives us the privilege of being his dwelling place. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore our confidence is not in our abilities. Our confidence is in God's ability. But it doesn't mean you're not going to go through some trials. In the book of Revelation, talking about the temple, John was taken up into heaven. And it says that he was brought before the throne of God. What is the throne? The throne is the dwelling place of God. Just like the temple is the dwelling place of God, and so the throne is the temple in heaven. 
And John goes through there, and, and at this point, the tribulation is going on in this world. And all the terrible things are going on here in this world. And all these people are coming in, uh, they've been beheaded for Christ, and they're around the throne. By the way, they've got heads now. But they're around the throne. Crying, how long, O Lord, till you avenge the blood that has been shed by those still on this world that, that have declared war against you. And as all the saints that are still on earth that have been saved during the tribulation are crying out to God, John sees the throne of God begin to tremble. And there's a, like a thundering sound, a lightning, that power. And you know that we, we think of that and we say, whoa, I better back up a little bit. But to the saints of God around the throne, that's exciting. Because that's our God. Our God is hearing the voices of those who are crying out to him. And it goes into his ears, and our God, the throne room trembles with his power as he commands his angels, Go and bring my judgments upon those who are my enemies who have declared themselves the servants of Satan. Go and bring my judgment upon them. And as it happens, this earth trembles with the judgment of God. But for the saints, when we hear that, we're shouting hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Satan is coming under the fire of God. You know, as I've taught this many times now in the book of Revelation, I find it exciting. People say, well, I don't dare read the book of Revelation. It's too scary. It depends on what side you're on. If, if, if you're not living for God, it should be it should be scary. But if you're living for God, Christ is your Savior. This is the most exciting thing. Because it's our God that is listening. It is our God that is all powerful. It is our God that cares about his own. It is our God that hates sin. Hallelujah. And it's that sin that he's going to judge. And Satan, who has caused you all your problems all these years, and brought all the tears that you've shed, that you've seen your family shed, he is going to come under the judgment of God. And that's going to be one exciting day. But can we back up a little bit? How about today? This all-powerful God. This God who one day is going to end it all. And sin will be destroyed. Satan will be destroyed. The enemies of God will be destroyed. And all that's left is God, His children, and total holiness. Now that's worth shouting about. That's exciting. Here's what David describes. He says, My cry did enter into God's ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was rough. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Now that's the power of God. And when you cry out to the Lord in your distress, you are guaranteed he knows your voice. And he hears. 
and he will make it right. But in the midst of the struggle, God is performing something inside of you you may not understand. But because God is a God of love, He will not let you go. You know, one of the beautiful things, you know, you watch a little child crawl up in mom or dad's arms. You can be guaranteed, no matter how that child squirms, they're not going to drop the child. You may not be comfortable in what you're going through. But unless you can find comfort, God knows your weakness. He knows your fears. He knows how you struggle and doubts can come up. God knows. But God will not drop you. Because he loves you. And he will see you through the dark times. And when you get to the other side, you will realize how the things that were the hardest are the things that brought you the closest. Maybe right now it's awfully hard to say thank you, Jesus. But the time will come when you say, thank you, Jesus. I've gone through some awful hard times. I, come, I was at a place where I didn't think I could ever preach again. I didn't think I could ever sing again. I was done. I felt like I was dead. And then I got a call from our in our time. Maybe you remember him from years back. He was on the radio for many, many years. R. W. Norheim, Pasadena, California. R. W. Norheim called my number. And he said, Gary, he says, would you and your wife come and sing for my crusade? For my convention. And I wanted to say, dead people don't sing because that's how I felt. But we went, and God showed us there's life. I didn't think I'd ever preach again. And then I got the call to stand in this pulpit and preach. And you know, you people that were here, most most of you were not here at that time. But you didn't know where I was, what I was going through. But now as I look back, if I had not gone through the valley of death, I would not be equipped to take your hand as you go through that valley and lead you out. I don't want to go back through that valley again. But you know what? I am glad that I did. Because of what I went through, I've been able to take the hand of entire churches and lead them out of the valley. Because I understood. And maybe the valley you're going through right now is the very valley that's going to teach you and train you to reach into the heart of people who are so down they want their life to come to an end. And you can say, I've been there. I've been there. I know what it feels like to be so down 
but I feel I can't get it any lower unless I get a shovel. And that's where, like David, in my distress, I call upon the Lord. And he heard my cry. And today, God loves you. Is He hears your voice. And of all the millions of people, He, he hears your voice and know where it's coming from. I love being in a crowd of people. And there's a lot of children in there, and all of a sudden, one baby, one little one starts to cry. And immediately, I don't know how it happens, but there can be a whole bunch, but that child's mom knows it's hers. And God save the person that gets in the way. She's gonna be there, and she's gonna pick that child up and comfort that child because of love. Even more so, does God hear your voice? Even more is God willing to heal every hurt because of the cries you share. Because He loves you. And that's why He says to us, trust me. When you feel there's no place else to turn, lift your hand. And you're going to feel the hand of God. He'll take your hand. At a point where I was just, I had no idea what to do. I was just totally confused, nothing. I raised my hand one day. And I felt a hand reach down from above and actually take my hand, just like if I reached out and you took my hand. I felt the hand take mine. And something spectacular happened. The Holy Spirit came in. My heart has been filled ever since. You're in distress. And reach out your hand. Don't listen to the devil. Just reach out your hand. In fact, what I want to do right now before we pray, I want you to close your eyes. I want you all to shut your eyes. And how many go on through the stress? Just reach out your hand right now to just forget about that anybody else is in this room. Reach out your hand and say, Jesus, I need your hand. Take my hand. Just take my hand. I'm reaching out by faith today. I need healing in my heart, healing in my soul. I need the power of God in me to set me free. I reach out to you right now. God, take those hands. They may not feel your fingers, but God, lift the burdens out of your heart. Lift the pain. Lord, lift the fear of defeat <coughs> and set free from the past. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now what God wants you to do is step out and start walking in faith. Like the song we're going to close in today, we're going to trust and we're going to obey. Because there's no other way. One more verse before we do. Verse 18 says, He delivered me from my strong enemy. And he goes, to the little Lord, he says, Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. Oh, play with the walk of God. Amen. Amen.
Father 